count, man. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, we're uh, here to have a uh, further discussion on the uh, campaign against uh, drug abuse. Uh, a number of these things we've discussed before. Uh, there is a discussion paper in front of us, and uh, particularly I think it is to put you in a position uh, where you can discuss this matter today first with the Republican leadership, which is exceedingly uh, concerned because of what they see the Democrats and anti-drug abuse policy, uh, which are listed in the discussion paper there, in terms of uh, drug-free workplaces, schools, expanded treatment programs, expanded international cooperation, strengthened law enforcement, and increased public awareness and prevention. I think the purpose today was to discuss some of the things that will follow on from the basic program you're announcing today, and to get some views of different cabinet members uh, as to what we should be doing. Uh, let me ask Carlton, right behind me here, uh, if uh, you want to make any comments. Yeah, yes, sir. Thank you. set out to reduce drug abuse in the military forces, and I'm pleased to say that our military and involving mandatory testing has cut drug use by 67% since 1981. And more than 20 federal agencies are now actually involved in fighting drug trafficking as a, as a result of legislation passed by all of you, the military is assisting in drug enforcement activities also. And the Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force has, since 1982, won indictments against more than 9,000 drug traffickers. Five years ago, there were less than 1,000 parent groups working against drug abuse. And this was one of, the, one of the projects, or the main project, that Nancy took on. And when she started, there were, uh, as I say, only 5,000 such groups. Now there are 10,000, over 10,000 local groups and the just say no clubs working to fight against this problem. I don't know if you're aware or not, but that just say no came out of a little talk she was giving to some high school kids in Oakland, California. I want to ask her a question. How and what could they do? And she said, just say no. And now today there's 10,000 just say no clubs. But uh, I've been meeting with the cabinet. We've discussed Double federal electric wells. Clear the channel on the bridge? Uh, time to spare, go by your right. <laughs> Well, we're talking about drugs. I understand. Uh, and uh, I believe the time is right. And we, I think, of all of us, 
Justice of the Cabinet around this table to challenge Americans to establish a drug-free nation and to really create a crusade at the minute, just nas nationwide, involving everything, from business leaders, education, and everything else. And the immediate goal, and I'm, I'll, I'll say it here, but we're talking about at least a 50% reduction for the next three years, but I think publicly we want to go further and just simply say our goal is going to be the eradication of the use of drugs. And this is means to mobilize every segment of our society against illegal drugs. And we'll get the message to the drug user that illegal drugs will no longer be tolerated in our society. I know that you've all been working on this problem too, so I'm interested in hearing your thoughts and your approach to this, because this is one where I think we're going to work together. So, Robert, would you like to? Well, we have a task force uh, on the House side. Uh, Bob, you and I have. Hi, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. No problem. Good to see you. I'll wait as long as you want. Good to see you. Pleasure. No. I hope we get a. Okay. Just a. Yeah, the family better go. Yeah, and then we better have our little motley crew here. Caitlin? Oh, boy. For goodness sakes, Caitlin, wake up for this. Wait till I get my hat and I'll go with you. I think Caitlin got tired of waiting on that. Oh, she's ready for the camera. Did you see that? <laughs> well, why don't we come in here? Okay. And if you're in the middle, I think it'll be pretty. Okay. All right. I'll be on this side. How about putting you in the is that all right? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hey. You're in luck. Cufflinks for you. Thank you very much. The bookmark for you. I know what's coming next. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is a jar in here of jelly beans with the seal this engraved on it. And that's for you. I think you a little young for that. <laughs> She'll take a good pass at it. Yeah, yeah, there. Here. What do you say, honey? Okay, can you take? Got it. And then. This is just a sample of before they get home. It's too long to wait for them. Okay. This is a sample of what's in the jug. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate this very yeah. much. Thank, thank, thank you, you for what you're doing. No, no, great. Thank you again. You bet. Makes it all worthwhile, huh? <laughs> we'll right. save this one. Bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Mr. President. Ambassador Anderson. Yes, hello. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to see you. Well, right, but now the important one is we'll get one with the family. Bonnie Anderson. Nice to see you. Hello there. Hello there. Well, should we get some eggs by the family? That, that's a good should idea. One and one on each side. And, uh,
Well, I hope you won't forget us, sir. I hope you'll come to work with us while I'm here. I remember hearing you talk about free enterprise in communist countries when we were in Geneva for the summit. Hungary has more of it than any other communist country, so. In fact, I was just reading the other day some later reports on one. They were almost expected to look at one. That's right. A lot of interesting things. Yeah. They'd love to have you come. Well, yes. George Schultz came back with a story, a joke, you know, they were telling him in Hungary about uh, the Schultz, their attitude toward the situation. Yeah. You know, you know, I, I was with him, but now I, I'm not sure two, which joke. Two but friends, the, the young man, that the one was a Russian, the other was a Hungarian, and they were walking along the border between two countries. I, I think came by the chest. No, and I the haven't. Russian Ivan said to the other, no, he said, my friend, wonderful. He said, let us like two true communist comrades divide this between us. And the uh, Hungarian said, no, your life was still the 50. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. President. Well, it's a pleasure to work on you. actually reduce the imports in 1987 and limit future annual growth to one half of one percent for Taiwan and approximately one percent for Hong Kong. Yesterday afternoon they announced an agreement with South Korea, which will also limit future annual growth of textile imports from them. Now these are the toughest textile agreements that the United States has ever negotiated. And further, we have successfully concluded our negotiations on a multi-fiber agreement. <coughs> override of my veto, I think, of this protectionist legislation would have the effect of shattering these important agreements and our hopes for broad participation in the new GATT round, where we would like to significantly broaden access to foreign markets for U.S. goods and services. Now, let me ask Lady Ida to discuss the specifics of the agreements that we as people have negotiated, and then ask Jim Baker to give us the his overview of the trade legislation situation in the context of this vote on the textbook bill. And uh, we'll some from Trent Hughes. You'll have your chance also. 
I like to just be what <laughs> <laughs> requested pay raise, reduce military personnel to 10,000 below 86, 24,000. 